Hi, I'm Rochelle, Founder and Managing Director of Share the Dignity Australia. And I'm Dakota, and I'm a player of the Brisbane Lions AFLW team. Today we're going to answer some questions for you guys, and we're really excited about it. Question one, can you describe a time when you have seen a man proactively advocating for gender equality? Yeah, great question. I know that when um, Share the Dignity and myself played a really big role in removing the um, GST on sanitary items, my husband was the number one man who stood up and asked the question to Malcolm Turnbull and said, you know, is it right that females are paying GST on sanitary items? So I was so proud to be there beside him and, and he quite often will talk about inequalities in a room full of men and women and he just doesn't care, he just wants to do the right thing. My time would have to be my coach, um, Craig Stasevich. He's obviously a huge advocate for women in sport and Stood, he stood up for us. You know, we obviously get a lot of comments about how AFLW is bad and, and we don't, we're not up to the standard of the men, but he's never backed down from, from showing these people that we do, we, we are here to play footy and we are trying our best. Just give us that time. And he's a huge, yeah, huge advocate for women in sport. I, I appreciate him a lot. What drives and motivates your work? Everyone just wants to win a premiership. That's all you want, that's all you, that's all you strive towards at, at, at footy but also on a more serious note like having a voice and, and sharing our voice and sharing what women in sport are capable of. What drives and motivates me to do my work is knowing that I'm paving the way for the younger generation. I'm giving the girls that opportunity that that's all they're, that's all they're going to know is that there are women playing in sport. I didn't have that when I was growing up. It was all just men on the screen, men playing this, men playing that. I think yeah I've never actually watched a woman's game on TV, if that, when I was younger. So I'm paving the way and that really motivates me and, and makes me want to succeed more so then that w women know and young girls know that that's the goal, that's the final margin and you've made it. And you're doing a great job because at the end of the day when I was at school there was no women's sport at all on TV and there were no photos of women in sport. So it's come such a long way, but we have such a long way to go, right? My drive and motivation for my work is really clear that I just believe that there's no woman or girl in Australia who should not have access to the very basic essentials like sanitary items to be able to deal with their period. And I get up every morning and know that the work that we do at Share the Dignity makes a difference to women and girls in need. And it's really easy to help us to end period poverty. It's all been... You know, it's a very easy driver for me. Um, I spend most of my days surrounded by incredible people who want to make a difference, but most of my days are filled with a little bit of sadness at listening to some of the stories that are that are told. You know, I will never forget meeting a 14-year-old girl who had no other choice but to live on the streets because the family life that she lived in was so unsafe and that she knew to go into a laundromat and still socks to be able to deal with her period. So imagine putting somebody else's socks in your underwear to deal with your period. And so no girl, no woman in Australia should ever have to go through that. And that is what drives me. What advice would you give your younger self when you were in high school? That's a pretty easy one. I think that when I was in high school, we were told it was vain to, to love yourself. And I think that you can't really love anybody else until you like and love yourself and to stop being so harsh on the things that I didn't like about myself. If And I probably was brought up to focus just on the bad things about me and not about, you know, there may be 10 things about me that I like, but I only ever focused on the two things that I didn't like about me. So I think just be kind to yourself and start to love yourself. I would, I'd be pretty similar. Mine, if I was to go back and give my year 10 to 12 self some advice. It'd just be, just to be open-minded, you know? There's so many different people in this world that are all living their own life, that are all going through the same, sorry, all going through different things. And who are you to judge them? Who are you to have an opinion about someone that you've never met? That's one thing footy's done for me is, obviously we have a thing called white line fever. So any team I verse, I strongly dislike anyone in that team but you don't actually know those people. Like, people don't like me solely based on how I play my footy. And I don't like people solely based on how, I've played my, how, I play, how they play their footy. So one thing it's taught me is, is you gotta give people the time of day. You gotta listen to their stories, you gotta listen to what they have to say because 
it's so important because then that's also gathering your knowledge of the world, but, but it's also making them happy because you're listening to what they have to say. Take the time to be open-minded about people. Don't, there's so much hate in this world. There's so much rubbish that goes on and it's so easy to be kind and, and just listen to what people have to say because that person could then change, change your world and change your whole outlook on life. And I just think people are so shallow minded because of obviously sometimes it could be their upbringing or who they surround themselves with or their, their own opinion, but you gotta listen. You gotta listen, you gotta learn. And, and that's, that's how I see it. I think living one day at a time and getting the fullest you can out of that day is really important too. Like, and I don't think you, you think like that when you're in primary school, but then when you get to high school, everything starts to weigh down on you. And, and half of those expectations are your expectations. So let them go and just enjoy the day and then wake up the next day and be grateful for that next day. It, it, for me at 50, it's really sad that there's so many years lost to worrying about what the next day brings and not enjoying the day that you're in, actually in. Yeah, and I'm glad at 22, I'm starting to understand that now, because yeah. I'd hate to get down the track and, and find out that there's so many missed opportunities that I could have, you know, taken my life in a whole nother route and I could have been, you know, a builder in some cool country building schools for kids, you know. There's so many different paths to take. So I just think open-minded and do what makes you happy. And that's one thing I could ask, tell myself in high school. You can do anything at any time as long as that's what you want to choose to do. Can you share a time when a small action inspired change? I'll be very self-indulgent here. I read an article that talked about how many women were experiencing homelessness in 2015. Um, and that reading that article and understanding that women were going without the very basic of essentials led me to starting Share the Dignity, which now we look at, we've collected 2.8 million packets of pads and tampons to give out to 3,000 charities that we work with that helps millions of women who are experiencing homelessness, having fled domestic violence, our drought-stricken farming communities, our remote indigenous communities, every girl everywhere should have access to sanitary items. So I think that if I look at that, that one small act has turned into something so much bigger. But then there's other small acts that I've seen, you know, when I've seen somebody take an older lady's shopping trolley and put it back in the bay for her, you know, that costs nothing but just kindness. And I think to me, they're the things that make me smile. So whether your act of kindness is little or, or big, they're all measured and they mean something to somebody. Mine, mine would have to be um, uh, the, it was, a, it was a, a big gesture actually, but it w is what triggered the conversation of indigenous players. And it was the thing that Adam Goods did when he lifted his shirt up after he scored a goal in front of the whole crowd and they booed him. And I think, that's very strong and powerful for the indigenous culture, you know. We're a huge part of the game now and I think that that massive gesture, that massive gesture really triggered the conversation to have around indigenous players and, and then that therefore has um, brought us like indigenous round and more, more things that are evolved around um, like the indigenous players. So we were very fortunate enough to have our very first AFLW indigenous round on the weekend. So that's a huge step in the right direction then for, for the younger kids, like the younger indigenous kids, like I was fortunate enough to even design the Guernsey. So just stuff like that, like that big gesture he did has now sparked a huge influx of like things coming down the track, so. And that was about him being brave, right? Be brave whenever you can be brave is, is what I say, because you never know that one day, that one couple of seconds has a massive ripple effect for years and years and years and generations. So. Kudos to him. Kudos to him, yeah, he's definitely changed the way um, has. Indigenous has come about in, in the AFL. Absolutely. What does a world that is equitable and inclusive look like, sound like and feel like? Oh, great question. I think that that world looks like a world where we're not even having to ask that question, right? You should be able to do whatever you want to do, whatever brings you the joy and the reason to wake up in the morning. When we don't have to ask that question is when we know that we're in the right place, but we're not there yet. We've got a lot of work to do. Why is it important to challenge the norms? Because you're giving yourself a voice. It's important. It's very important to challenge norms, you know? There needs to be people with voices out there. Or you, if it's not you, then you can be one of those people that lift up other people to use their voice. We can't all be roaring at the same time. When 
women get together or when people passionately believe in something, that it takes one giant voice, but there takes an awful lot of people to lift that person up to be able to use their voice. Thank you so much for joining us today and giving us your time. However, we do have one final question. What is one small thing you can do to challenge systems of inequality? <laughs>